Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make a paper skimmer. And this activity will help us to review what we practice with our measurement stations in how to read a ruler properly. A couple of key things about making a skimmer. Accuracy is really important. Uh, if you don't have your measurements right, then it's not gonna work as well. Measure twice, okay? And also, we wanna be precise. So we want to make sure that our lines are nice and straight. We're holding the ruler nice and tight on the paper. And when we fold, I'll show you some tricks that we can use to make sure that our fold lines are nice and sharp creases. And then finally, when we start to put this thing together, we wanna make sure that the tape that we're using, that we tape it uh, really cleanly so that we limit the amount of friction that's happening between the skimmer itself and the floor. So uh, let's start by just taking a look at an example of a skimmer, okay? This would be it. Uh, you can see that it has a couple pieces to it. Um, it has the main body panel here, okay? You cut that out, you fold it, all right? You also make some cuts in the back here to give you a back scoop. We make a front air scoop. Okay, there's that front air scoop. So it's giving you a downward, uh, a downward angle to push air down and push the skimmer up. And we also had some fins in the back. And then for mine, I always tend to put a little spoiler here on the top and it helps the, the fins from falling over. As you can see, they, they do have a tendency to lean one way or the other and that does help with it. And then before launching, I would always kind of give it a little bend to straighten it out. Um, this one's kind of, this one's been around for a few days, so it's kind of, it's, you know, it's been handled a little bit. Um, to put these pieces together, I've used tape. And then some of the things missing off of this would be the paper clips and the paper fastener. If you have the extra time and you want to make yours stand out, you could also always decorate. All right, so let's go over the list of materials that you'll need. First up, you want a pencil. You wanna make sure that that pencil is sharpened so that you can make nice, clean lines. Obviously, we're gonna need a ruler. I use this nice steel ruler here. Uh, this one does have down to 30 seconds, but we will not be using that side for this project. The smallest that we'll be going down to in terms of the increment of an inch would be the 1 8 um, increment. You've got your instructions right here, okay? I've remade my own instructions. The only thing missing off of this would be the little spoiler piece at the top, but that's gonna be a three inch by half inch piece of paper. Speaking of the paper, for this project, you cannot use normal copy paper. You need to use a heavier weight paper. Uh, if you don't have a heavier weight paper, then maybe a thinner cardboard material, uh, maybe from um, some cereal boxes or a cracker box or something like that. You don't want it to be too thick because then it'll be harder to fold and your folds won't be as precise, uh, but you definitely want to make something uh, or pick something that has a little bit more weight to it. Like I said, the regular copy paper is just not gonna hold up for what we're doing. You're gonna need scissors, okay? I got a nice sharp pair of scissors here so I can cut really clean. The scissors are also uh, larger scissors. You don't wanna really use small scissors for this because you wanna be able to make nice clean cuts down the lines that you're gonna draw. Uh, for this one, we use the jumbo paper clips. Okay, jumbo paper clips. They are good for adding weight. Uh, and also, if we need to use them, there is a way to be able to use the paper clip as your, uh, your, your launching point as well. But in class here, we are going to use these brass paper fasteners, all right? So the size is not really all that important. You well, I guess you don't want it to be too small because then it's not gonna be able to, you're not gonna be able to hook the rubber band on. Uh, and especially in class here, we use the thicker, heavier duty rubber bands. Uh, but you, this is a three quarter inch you don't want to use one that's too large, but uh, something that, that is maybe three quarters to inch and a half or something like that is fine. So that's it for the materials. Let's get started with step one. All right, the first step of this project, 
Uh, I always like to start with the main body panel, okay, up at the top there. And as we can see, the main body panel is going to be 11 by 4 inches. And the trick here is to make sure that we keep our lines as straight as possible. And after doing this a couple times, I came up with a couple of uh, tips that help us to draw straight lines. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to put it on the bottom of the paper. Now, one mistake that a lot of people make is that on the ruler, you can see there that the zero line is not the end of the ruler. There may be some rulers, I think the, the elementary style plastic rulers start at the edge, but the rulers that we have here in class have a zero line and you wanna make sure that you are matched up with that zero line. So we're gonna hold that nice and tight against the bottom of the paper and we're gonna make a little mark at 11 inches. And when you make that mark, you wanna make sure that the mark is nice and clean. You don't wanna make like a little circle. You don't need to make it too thick, just a nice clean with a sharp pencil line right at 11 inches. When you make that mark, you wanna be looking down directly down at the ruler. You don't wanna do it from the side because it kinda of skews your perspective and you could end up making a mistake. And even a little bit, like a 1 16th of an inch is enough to impact the performance of your skimmer. The next thing that we're gonna do in order to make a nice straight line is we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna put it at the top of the paper now. So at the top of the paper, I'm gonna flip this around. Now it doesn't, my zero is on this side, right? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up at 11 on the top and I'm just gonna make a mark at zero. So essentially I have a mark at the top of the paper and at the bottom paper that is exactly 11 inches from this side. Now, what that allows me to do is to take my ruler, I'm gonna line it up with the zero at the bottom of the paper, right on that line, and to make sure I'm drawing a straight line, I'm gonna line up with the top mark that I just made. That ensures that our marks that we're about to make are going to be straight. So now that I have that lined up, the zero at the bottom of the paper, and it's a nice straight ruler, I'm gonna make marks at one, or half an inch, okay, just 0.5. I'm gonna make a mark at three and a half, and I'm gonna make a mark at four, okay? I'm being really precise about where I put my marks. Now that I've got those marks on my paper, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna put it on the other side over here. Now the zero is up at the top, so I'm just gonna line it up with the 12. I'm gonna make a mark a half inch from the bottom. I'm gonna make a mark three, inch, three and a half inches and then four. So I'm gonna count up one, two, three and a half and four. The marks that we just created are going to serve as guidelines. We can line up our ruler now and make nice straight lines. My suggestion at this point is that you pause the video and make sure that you've done things correctly. Double check your measurements to make sure that they are exactly where they're supposed to be. So that's 11 inches from the side because our main body panel is gonna be 11 inches long. And then we're making marks a half inch, three and a half, and four inches from the bottom of the paper. And I did the same thing on the side. Now, why do we do that? I can just take my ruler, I'm gonna line it up at both dots that I made at the top, my four inch marks. I'm gonna hold that ruler nice and tight. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna draw a line all the way down the paper. Then I'm gonna do the same thing at the other one, the next mark down on each side, my three and a half inch marks, start my line, draw all the way down. Okay, now we've got two lines. Do the same thing on the bottom, line it up, dot to dot and we're gonna make another line you should have three lines on your paper that are perfectly parallel right the last line we're gonna make for right now is to take our ruler and make a line on the side and go straight from the four inch mark all the way down to the bottom of the paper the next step what we're going to do is I'm going to measure in from the side of the paper, and I'm going to measure and mark at three inches in on my second line right here.
okay? My second line from the top, the one that was marked at three and a half inches, I'm making a mark three inches in from the side. On the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to my half inch line, not the bottom of the paper, but the half inch line. I'm carefully lining up my ruler right on a whole inch. I'm lining it up at five, just happens to be five. So I'm gonna come in to two inches and make a mark because that's three inches from the side. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make a nice straight line going from one line to the next. Now, if you look at our instructions on the main body panel, it's pointing out that we need to score and fold three of these lines. Now we're not gonna fold yet, but we're going to score them. The purpose of scoring is so that when you do fold, the folds are going to be a nice sharp creases. We don't want crooked or uh, messy fold lines. We want them to be nice and sharp. So what I'm gonna do, and it's really important that you hold your ruler as tight as you can. I'm gonna put my ruler on my three and a half inch line and I'm going to line that up and I'm going to score. Now, what is scoring? Scoring is taking your ruler, holding it tight, taking your pencil and making a nice, dark, heavy line right there. And then when you go to fold that, there's gonna be a slight indentation and the fold is going to be easier to make nice and straight, okay? We're also gonna use our ruler in that process to fold the paper over. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, the line that we had drawn from our two half inch marks. And we're gonna line that up as carefully as we can. And we're going to go ahead and score that line, same thing. All right, and then finally, as the instructions say, we're going to score the line right here in the middle. Now it's important that you only score in between these two lines and not score all the way to the edges of the main body panel because we don't need to do that, okay? So there we have the main body panel. This is going to end up being the bottom of the main body panel. So if you did want to decorate yours, at this point you could flip the paper over and uh, do your drawing on the opposite side because this is going to be the bottom half. The next step here is to make the air scoop, okay? The air scoop right down here on the corner. This is going to fit into the front of the main body panel. It's gonna provide the lift that we need to reduce the friction on the skimmer when it's touching the ground. So we'll just lift it right above the ground with the force of the air being pushed down by the skimmer and the equal and, opposite re equal and opposite reaction of that action is going to be the skimmer lifting up ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do here, actually before we even start drawing this, uh, this air scoop, what you wanna do is measure the exact distance between these two lines, the inside lines that we just scored. You wanna make sure that your air scoop exactly matches whatever that distance is. So mine, is as it should be three inches from those two scored lines, okay? So I don't have to adjust my scoop. If your distance is something else, let's say you're off by a 16th and it's a 16th too wide or a 16th too short, you need to adjust the width of that air scoop. So you would make it two and 15 sixteenths or three and an eighth, whatever that distance is, you don't need to redo the main body panel as long as everything is straight. If you're just off a little bit uh, on, the, on the middle section there, you can just adjust the width, okay? So you have to take that into account for the instructions I'm about to, I'm about to give. All right, now, the challenge with making these pieces is to always make straight lines. So in order to do that, we're going to hold our ruler at the bottom of the paper. I'm gonna start at a whole inch line. I'm just I just happen to start at eight. What I wanna do is I wanna come in one inch. I'm gonna make a mark at seven. Okay, whatever you're holding your ruler at, just come in one inch, make a mark. 
Then you're going to go three inches past that. So I'm gonna mark at seven and four. Those are gonna be the two marks that we're going to, to start with to make, our, uh, to make our air scoop. Now, as I said before, if your distance that we just checked on our main body panel is something different, then you need to adjust the, the width of the scoop that uh, we just made right there. All right, we're gonna take the same approach that we took with the main body panel. I'm gonna take my ruler again. I'm gonna line it up at the top. This time I'll line it up with zero. I wanna come in one inch, just like we did on the bottom of the paper. And I'm gonna make a mark at four, so three inches away. Again, adjust your width if your main body panel width was off from three inches. Now, we can take our ruler line it up at the bottom with the zero line. I'm gonna match the two points, point to point. And then I'm going to draw a three inch line. So I'll go up to three inches and come down. And I'll do the same thing on the left hand side here. And line that up, go up to three and come straight down. Now, once you do that, you're gonna take your ruler and put it across from the top of each of these three inch lines. And that should be three inches across or whatever your uh, width is if you had to adjust it, like I said. All right, so now we've got a three by three square. I'm take my ruler, I'm gonna put it back on the top of this square. And I'm going to make little lines on each side that are one eighth. So I'm just gonna go from my whole inch line here to one eighth and make a little line. Same thing on the other side, out to one eighth. Okay, and remember on your ruler, the longest line in the middle is gonna be the half. Then you split that in half and you've got the next longest line is a quarter. And then the next line is going to be an eighth. And when we're trying to figure out the next part, which is three eighths, we're going to count every line that is equal to or longer than that line, that eighth line. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna put it down at the bottom. I'm gonna line up so that I'm exactly on the whole inch line. And then I'm gonna count three eighths. One, two, three. And I'm just gonna put a little mark at three eighths. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three, three eighths on that side. You take your ruler. You match it up from the end of the little one eighth line that we put at the top to the mark that we just made that's three eighths away on the bottom and you draw an angled line. We do not need to measure that line because the length of that line is not, as, is not what's important as long as we've made the little one eighth line at the top and the three eighth mark at the bottom, we should get the proper shape for our air scoop. The last step for the air scoop is to score the original straight three inch lines that we drew, our vertical lines here that run parallel. So I'm gonna score the one here, holding my ruler nice and tight. Then I'm going to score the next line on the opposite side, holding my ruler nice and tight. And there we have our air scoop. The next step is to make our fins, and there's two different ways that you can do this. You can draw one, cut it out and trace it, or you can draw two at the same time. So we're gonna flip the paper around so we can use this flat space here. Just like we did with the main body panel, we are going to use the edges of the paper to provide us with straight lines, straight edges, okay? I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna line it up at zero on the side of the paper, and I'm gonna make a mark at three inches, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom of the paper. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make a mark from three to zero, so I have a mark of three inches. And actually, as I say that, I realize my mistake. I'm actually gonna put my ruler at six inches, okay? And I already have my mark at three, and then I'm gonna put another mark at zero. So hold the ruler at six inches on the bottom, you've got a mark at three, and you've got a mark at zero, okay? From that point, what we're going to do is we are going to measure. Now it's not as imperative that we get this line to be exactly straight, so not a huge deal. 
If you want, you can take your ruler and go up to the top, line it up with zero, make a mark at six, just like we did for our other things that we were making, the main body panel and the air scoop. Then you come down to your little six inch mark and at the top, you line them up and we're gonna draw a line that is three inches in height. So here we have a line that's three inches in height. What this does allow us to do is to now make sure that the top of our, of our fins are going to be straight. So I'm gonna put my ruler on the zero at the edge of the paper. I'm gonna line it up with that original mark that we made for the three inches in height on the side of the paper. And I'm gonna line it up at the six inch line that we just drew. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna draw a line all the way across. What I'm actually gonna do is just draw a half inch line in from that side and a half inch line in from the side of the paper, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up to the top of the paper. I'm gonna hold my ruler at zero. We could have done this before, but I forgot. I'm gonna make a mark at three. Although the way I did this, I could have just used the line from my main body panel that we already drew. I'm gonna line up those two dots. I'm gonna put zero on the bottom of the ruler. If you need to pause the video to catch up, then do so. If you need to rewind it, then do so. All I'm gonna do is here is just draw a little vertical half inch line okay so i made a half inch line then it's just connect the dots you line up your ruler nice and straight and connect the dots that way and then you do the same on the opposite side and at the end you are going to have two perfectly drawn and identical fins you will cut them out you'll cut right in the middle to get your two fins now that we have drawn those pieces, you could either stop here and cut them all out, or if you wanted to have that nifty little spoiler to help keep your, your fins straighter, okay, then you can do that too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same side of the paper that we were just using for our fins, and this is gonna be a, a simple, simple little rectangle. I'm gonna hold my ruler, I'm gonna line it up with a whole inch line, and I'm gonna make a mark from wherever I am here. I'm at five, I'm gonna come in to eight. I'm just making a mark at three inches because I want this little strip of paper to be three inches. I'm gonna then take my ruler, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna find on the side here, I'm gonna make a mark at a half an inch. So here's my half inch mark and for this, you can really just eyeball. So I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna draw a line as straight as possible. This little strip of paper will have really little impact on your skimmer's performance. So once I do that, I'll draw a line across, I'm gonna draw a line down. Again, this step is completely optional. Now it's time to cut. Now you really wanna take your time when it comes to cutting, all right? So don't rush it. Really make sure you're on those lines. Okay, that's why you want to use nice sharp scissors. Really follow that line, especially when it comes to the sides of the air scoop and the main body panel. You don't want to have uneven lines and make sure that you're only cutting the proper lines. So those lines that we scored on the main body panel you do not want to cut all the way down on those. You are only cutting up to the three inch mark of the line that we scored going across the main body panel. And I will show you that in just a moment. Now that we've got our pieces cut out, what we want to do is start folding those lines that we scored. So, oh, one thing I forgot when you're cutting here on the back of your main body panel, you wanna cut on those lines that we scored, but only to the three inch line that we drew going across. Okay, so we'll cut nice and carefully up to that point. Okay, so you should have a little flap here at the back. And eventually we're gonna take that line that we scored and we are gonna give it a little bit of a downward bend 
so that we're not only producing lift at the front of our skimmer with the air scoop, but also at the back with this piece that we're gonna fold down, okay? So folding, how do we do it? You wanna take your ruler, you're gonna line it up, okay? You have it with your lines facing up, this is the bottom. We're gonna take our ruler, line it up along that line, and then you're gonna get your fingers under the short side of the paper here, put that ruler right on the line, as close as you can get it, and you start folding down the ruler to get a nice straight fold, okay? Once you have it folded a little bit like that, then you'll go like this and do a nice sharp crease on that fold and then just straighten it out, okay? We should have a nice straight fold on there. We'll do the same thing on the other side, okay? That's a nice shape. Then you're going to do the same thing to the air scoop. It's a little bit more difficult because you have such a small space to work with, but you're gonna line up your ruler, get it nice and straight, and then help that paper fold over the ruler, get it started, take your ruler out and give yourself a nice sharp crease. Okay, same thing to the other side. Now, when you're done, this air scoop should fit perfectly like this, okay? upside down underneath the main body panel. And if you measured and cut correctly, it should fit nicely inside there, okay? And we'll use some tape to attach it. Now, if you make it too wide, it's gonna push the sides of your skimmer out and it's not gonna work as well. And if you make it too narrow, it's gonna pull the sides of your skimmer in. All right, we've got some tape here, just regular old Scotch tape. I think we'll start with the fins. Now, if you don't have the ability to really fold this tape nice and tight, this might be a time to ask for some help from a parent or an older sibling, because sometimes, we do this in sixth grade, and sometimes students just don't have the dexterity to do this correctly. So you wanna hold that nice, and level, the fin is level with the bottom. Also, I've brought the fin forward slightly. And the reason that I'm bringing the fin forward slice, slightly is that I want to reinforce the part of the paper, the part of our side of the main body panel. And I'll show you just in a minute, let me get this tape on here. I'll show you why we do that. So I'm gonna, before I fold that tape over, I wanna make sure it's nice and straight. I'm holding it straight, and I do a nice sharp fold of that tape and get it underneath. Now, the reason that I'm putting the fin where it is and where I'm taping, how I'm gonna tape, and we're gonna even put more tape, is because you wanna stop this from bending too much. This is a weak point in the skimmer. So adding more tape and having that fin not sit directly on that line where it folds, is going to help it stay nice and straight. So now I'm gonna take another piece of tape and I'm gonna move forward on the fin and I'm gonna put my tape right there, okay? So on the fin and the main body panel, I'm trying to reinforce that area right there. Just like we did before, we'll fold it nice and tight. You wanna get that nice and tight because you don't want any tape hanging down too low and having an edge here, which would increase the friction of the bottom of your skimmer. So for time's sake, I won't do it now, but what you should do is add a couple more pieces of tape there just to further reinforce that, okay? The other thing we're gonna have to do is tape at the back so that our fin is connected all the way down. So we'll take some tape, we'll put it on the fin and on that little piece at the end there. Same thing, we fold it nice and tight and that'll keep the fin connected to that piece. Now on the main body panel, we're gonna just fold down a little bit. We don't need a crazy fold, but we're folding right along that scored line. And since we scored it, it'll fold nice. You don't need to fold it with the ruler. We actually don't want it folded down 
too much because we just we want air to be able to flow underneath it. We just want a little bit of a downward angle and not necessarily um, all the way touching the ground, okay? So now this part is a little bit hard to show, but we wanna lock in the angle of that back panel. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you this after I tape it, but I'm gonna hold that angle on the side. So I'm holding with my fingers, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tape on the top of that angle and I'm gonna roll that tape all the way, get it right in the corner, and tape it to the inside of the fin, okay? So right there. And what that's doing is it's holding the fin to the main body panel so it doesn't flap out, but I'm also maintaining that downward angle that we have right here, so that piece of tape. And you want it as close into that corner as you can. You don't, wanna, you don't want it super loose because then it's not gonna really hold together. All right, so that's how we do one. Got my second fin taped on there in the same manner, okay? I've got a little bit of tape sticking down right here. And what you could do when you're all done, just in case you get any more spots, is you can really, really carefully take your scissors and just trim that little bit of tape right off, okay? And that'll maintain nice, smooth finish on the bottom of your skimmer. Now, what I wanna show you here is I'm gonna take a piece of tape, okay? About an inch and a half, and I'm gonna rip it in half. It doesn't have to be perfectly in half, but we're gonna take that, we're gonna save that piece. I'm gonna take that little spoiler piece, I'm gonna put tape on one side of it, and I'm gonna put some tape on the other side of it. And then I'm actually going to hold that onto my fin and line it up right on the edge and bend that tape down. And then I will turn it around and I'll hold it nice and straight on the other fin and put that tape down. Now I've got my little spoiler on there. Now the scoop. This part is a little trickier to tape. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape and we want the scoop to fit like this, all right? It goes up into the main body panel. So once it's in there, you want it all the way forward, okay? Try to even it out. And you want to make sure that you're pushing it all the way up into the main body panel. Then you're gonna take your tape and you are carefully going to tape the scoop on. I like to put the piece of tape on the outside of the main body panel on the side here. Then I fold that tape on the side, holding my air scoop exactly where I want it. Okay, folding the tape over and trying to get that scoop on there as best I can. All right, that is pretty good. My scoop is a little bit uneven, okay? That little bit really does make a big difference, all right? And if I was really being picky, I would probably make another scoop because I didn't do the best job. And that, I think, if I'm looking at my scoop, comes down to how I cut. I think I cut right on the line that I drew for one side and on the other side, I cut just outside the line, and that's enough to make just enough of a difference in where that air scoop sits. So I'm gonna try to make up for that in my taping here. We'll see how that comes out. All right, so my scoop is on there now. There should be a little bit of space between the main body panel and the scoop itself. You should be able to see right through, but you've got that downward angle. Now, what you should do is add a couple more pieces on there to keep it nice and strong, but we've got pretty much our skimmer all set. All we've got to do is add on our paper clips and our paper fastener, which we'll do next. All right, the next step is to decide where we are going to put our paper fastener. Now, I'll be honest, there's no perfect science to this. 
I know that I've found out over the years that putting it too close to your air scoop can cause a problem with the rubber band actually releasing. So we wanna come back a little bit, all right? Maybe about there, you want it in the middle as much as possible. And you wanna maybe be about two inches from that fold here, okay? Not too far, for, not too far forward, not too far back. I'm just gonna put a little mark right here. I'm gonna take one of my paper fasteners and very carefully and reinforcing with my fingers. And if you've got something else that's a little bit sharper, all you're trying to do is to make a little hole, okay? You can kind of wiggle back and forth and you don't push the whole thing through yet. All I wanted to do was make a little hole so it's easier to punch through after. Because now what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna take some tape, just a couple pieces of tape, and I'm gonna cover that hole in that mark that I just made. And I'm probably gonna use three pieces of tape. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if you don't, that hole from the force of the rubber band, I'm also putting tape on the bottom, so three pieces on the top and three pieces on the bottom, the force of that rubber band and you pulling is going to rip the paper and you would have to reseat your paper fastener every couple of launches. This way, it'll last a lot longer. So now you're definitely gonna need something a little bit sharper. You can use the point of your scissors. Just be careful, you don't poke yourself. If you're a younger student who just happens to have found this video, you might wanna ask for some help. Now you do not wanna make it too big of a hole, just so that you can feel that you've punctured the tape and then finish with your paper fastener. If you make too large of a hole to begin with, then the paper fastener is not gonna hold nice and tight. You wanna take your paper fastener and put it through the bottom of your main body panel. And you wanna leave, I would say, a quarter to three eighths of an inch of that paper fastener exposed. If you put it all the way tight, then you can't get the rubber band to actually hold on. On the top of the paper, you're gonna bend these prongs down on each side. So we'll bend down one side, we'll check our paper fastener. You kind of want it to be as straight as you can get it as you're bending this. Bend these down, okay? So you can see I've bent that. On the bottom, I can bend the head of this paper fastener to straighten it out as much as possible. And now, one more piece of tape on the top to hold that paper fastener where you want it. The next step is to take some paper clips. The amount of paper clips that you should add is gonna be up to you. I've seen uh, skimmers work really well with as little as three paper clips, and I've, I've seen skimmers work really well with four or more. So it really does depend. It's gonna depend on the angle of your air scoop and the back flap here as to how much lift you're generating and you need to counteract that lift with weight or else the front of the skimmer will come up too high and your skimmer will take flight. That is, on its own, pretty fun to do, but not our main objective. So notice that I'm putting my paper clips on the main body panel itself. I am not pinning down the air scoop with the paper clips. I also wanna space these paper clips evenly. I'm gonna put four, okay? I'm gonna put them right across the front and making sure I do not clip that air scoop. It's not what I wanna do. All right, so I've put them on here, okay? Four right across the top. Now, if you'd like, if you're gonna be hitting something like a table leg or a chair leg, if there is some objects that you need to go around, um, then you do, or you may certainly want to, um, I'm just adjusting this one so it looks the same as my other ones. Um, you may want to add a piece of tape over the top of those paper clips so they're not constantly flinging off your skimmer if you run into uh, a table leg or anything like that. All right, so you'd be all set to go Tape a heavy duty rubber band. If you don't have a heavy duty, that's fine. But tape a rubber band onto the floor. You're gonna wanna use electrical tape. It's less likely to rip. If you use scotch tape, 
you're likely after a couple launches just rip right through that tape and you're gonna have to keep doing it. So electrical tape works really good. Um, duct tape if you have it, although I think electrical tape is a little bit more friendly to surfaces like wood floors and things like that. So tape your rubber band down, you hook it onto your paper fastener, you hold by the flap in the back, you pull back, and how far back you pull is going to have an impact on how uh, the air skimmer performs, but you're gonna have to find out how far back is the right amount, okay? And you release and it should go. And if it's turning or flipping over, you gotta look at your edges on the bottom and you gotta look and make sure that your air scoop is sitting flat across um, and check the flap in the back. If it's angled like this, it could flip your skimmer over. So that's your skimmer. Good luck launching. Uh, share your um, videos of the launch with me. Hopefully you have a nice smooth area like a hallway with wood floor and your house to launch these. If you only got tile, then so be it. We'll see how it does. Uh, but the smoother the floor, the better. And in our classroom here, we've got about 60 feet of distance. For those of you who don't have one of these brass paper fasteners that we used, you could take a paper clip. You wanna hold it like this, okay? Hold it like that. You're going to hold the smaller side and just spin it. You wanna make a 90 degree corner with the paper clip, okay? Then you can carefully slide that on to the front of your skimmer. You might actually, you gotta get right in there in the scoop and just get a little bit of the paper clip onto the top. Now for this, you're definitely going to have to reinforce with tape quite a bit because the force of you pulling back on the rubber band is gonna make that wanna come out. So you wanna maybe use some electrical tape, not just scotch tape, and get the tape into your air scoop and fold it over the top and also tape across the top as well. And I would do that a few times, so keep alternating. Get the tape into the scoop, fold it over the top, piece of tape across the top. Do that a couple of times or else that paper clip's gonna pull right out all right, now that we've made our skimmer, it's time to set up your launching point. So as you can see on the screen here, you wanna take a rubber band and I would use a heavy duty rubber band if you have one. If you don't, it's fine, it'll still work. It might just break uh, after so many launches. Um, the, the tape that you wanna use is electrical tape. It has a little bit of flex to it, whereas scotch tape, it'll tend to rip through a lot easier. Now, as you can see, you wanna start by taping it down uh, perpendicular to how you're going to be launching. So I have that flat side of the rubber band is taped down and um, that first piece of tape is holding it flat down. The next step that you're going to want to do is to alternate taping uh, at 90 degree angles to really reinforce that tape being held down to the ground. I usually use about six to eight pieces of tape so that I don't have to uh, constantly redo it. Again, I'm using the heavy strength, um, the heavy duty rubber band, so it does not break as often. If you're using a regular rubber band, I wouldn't put so much tape because then it'll be annoying to have to change it every so often. Once you are ready to launch, it's time to take the bottom of your skimmer. Uh, and, and this is why it's important that you've reinforced where you put that uh, paper fastener with extra pieces of tape because there's gonna be a lot of stress on that paper there. And if you don't reinforce with tape, the paper fastener is just gonna rip right through your skimmer. So you, you make sure that the rubber band is not twisted and you wanna put it onto the paper fastener and then carefully place it down flat. And when you're ready, you're going to grab the skimmer by the flap at the back and pull straight back. Now the the distance that you pull the skimmer back is going to be dependent on the rubber band that you're using and how you've made your skimmer. So you'll have to just experiment with what is the best distance to pull back. Here's a video of the first launch with the skimmer and here I'm using the paper fastener. So I have hooked it, I've pulled back and you can see that the skimmer uh, really generates a, a good amount of speed 
uh, right off the bat. And I did pull it back uh, probably about a foot. And uh, for this launch, I hit a chair just before hitting that wall. So a very good launch. On the second launch here, I use the paper clip at the front of the skimmer. And, um, and I was a little bit more hesitant with pulling back too far because I was afraid I was gonna pull that paper clip right out. So it did not go quite as far. But as you can see, both options will work very well. So if you don't have the paper fastener, don't worry about it. Uh, and you can, you can use a paper clip at the front. Just really be sure to reinforce with tape. All right, so I hope you guys uh, have fun with your skimmers and uh, please be sure to share your videos. Thanks.